Welcome to the body imaging cases. I have gathered here in one frame the clinical data and the most important imaging observations in this young male with serological evidence of hepatitis B, primary infertility, left varicocele, elevated liver enzymes, high alpha fetoprotein, atrial fibrillation, anxiety, insomnia, chest pain, abdominal pain, and the diarrhea. And you are provided with contrast-enhanced CT, ultrasonography of the scrotum, ultrasonography of the liver, and MRI of the liver. Easily said and easily summarized, but actually this disease has greatly impacted the life of the patient for seven years. It started in 2014 when the patient discovered that he is having serological evidence of hepatitis B during a premarital medical checkup. This has been quite ignored because the patient has been asymptomatic and is newly married. Until he came back to his doctors in 2017 with primary infertility. Ultrasonography of the scrotum at that time has described these testicles as sonographically normal and has discovered left varicocele. Given the result of the semen analysis, which revealed the 0% progressive mobility and 100% abnormal forms of the sperms, this has been a quite a drastic picture of the semen analysis to be just explained by unilateral varicocele. Adding to that, that the liver enzymes were elevated. So the physicians refrained from the idea of treating the varicocele surgically as the sole cause of the infertility thinking that there may be something else in the background that is causing the infertility and they were right. In 2018, a trauma to the right knee has set the snowball of the background disease to roll. In itself, it was a limited a medical problem of bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus, which has been treated successfully by arthroscopy. But what happened after immediately after the procedure, the patient developed cardiac arrhythmia. Thinking that this may be due to pulmonary embolism, CT has been ordered. It revealed enlargement of the mediastinal lymph nodes. and no pulmonary embolism. Based on the CT features, the diagnosis of sarcoidosis has been put forward and has been verified histologically by transbronchial biopsy of the mediastinal lymph nodes. And since then, the patient started to read on his own about sarcoidosis in the internet and this has probably made more harm than benefit because he had also to read about the other problems he is having not knowing that they may be related to sarcoidosis the cardiac arrhythmia the hepatitis b the elevated liver enzymes the infertility and all this has pushed the patient into a poor psychological status. He visited his uh, psychiatrist who described the case as anxiety features, worried mood, apprehension, catastrophic thinking, insomnia, 
and decrease the libido and impotence. To add to the bad luck of the patient during these two years from 18 to 20, he had also an infection with COVID-19. But he continued to follow up and the imaging follow up of the uh, thorax revealed that there has been some regression in the size of the diastinal lymph nodes. Not knowing that the patient may have systemic sarcoidosis and not knowing that systemic sarcoidosis may regress at one site and progress at another site. Everyone has been reassured and no immunosuppression and no steroid therapy uh, was given. Imaging follow-up of the liver has also been continued in these two years. And the ultrasonography here shows no focal liver lesions. The best piece of information you can give to a patient with a high risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. And here the risk is double fold because we have in the background hepatitis B, we have also sarcoidosis. And if this is a liver that harbors sarcoidosis, then the possibility of sarcoidosis related hepatocellular carcinoma is there and this is a well recognized uh, disease entity now as we will see also from the present case so good about the focal liver lesions on this ultrasonography but what about the diffuse liver disease it is clear that this liver is fatty we know that from the absence of the echogenicity around the portal venules being masked by the high echogenicity of the fatty liver. But what about cirrhosis, yes or no? And what about sarcoidosis, yes or no? The echotexture of this liver is quite grainy and with some imagination, you can see even very small hypoechoic nodules all over the liver, which may be due to sarcoidosis. And they may also be cirrhotic nodules. But this should be taken with caution because a technically grainy ultrasound image may show the same effect. We have another sign here of diffuse liver disease, which is the convexity of the anterior surface of the liver, which suggests that this liver is rigid. We are using here a convex transducer, and with using a convex transducer and applying even a gentle pressure on the anterior abdominal wall, overlying, directly overlying the liver, we see that the soft liver will follow the same convexity, but the rigid liver may have a convexity in the opposite direction, as we see in this case. We have also to use this sign with caution because we have to do the exam ourselves. We have to verify with our own hands that we have applied sufficient pressure to get this sign valid. So we know that this liver is diseased, but we don't know why, if it is cirrhotic or if it is having sarcoid nodules. In 2021, the patient had chest pain, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and elevated alpha fetoprotein. And out of all these, the elevated alpha fetoprotein is very alarming. So on the ultrasound follow-up of 2021, there has been a focal liver lesion which was not seen before. And the spleen started to be markedly heterogeneous and harboring small nodules. 
So these most probably are representing sarcoidosis of the spleen. But what about the liver? The highest probability, particularly in the presence of elevated alpha fetoprotein, should be hepatocellular carcinoma. MRI of the liver has been done and at the site of the lesion seen by ultrasonography there is a slightly hyper intense lesion on T2 weighted images. We see quite well the um, sarcoidosis of the spleen. The liver is fatty, as we see in the uh, out-of-phase and in-phase images, and the fatty infiltration is quite heterogeneous. And on the out-of-phase images, we see lots of small spots. And we ask ourselves again if these are small sarcoidosis nodules. Nothing is definite at this size limit of the nodules. We are now having the gadolinium enhanced images and the lesion is strongly enhancing on the early arterial phase. On the subsequent phases we see bizarre washout and bizarre peripheral enhancement. They are not typically fitting with the clear washout of the whole lesion we see uh, in the Lyrats 5 hepatocellular carcinoma and the peripheral enhancement is also not that of the uh, capsule we usually see. So um, some radiologists may put this as Lyrats 5, some others may put it as Lyrats 4 and the, the rule tells us that if we are not certain Lyrats 5 or Lyrats 4, we have to go to Lyrats 4. The doubt becomes greater here on this um, coronal delayed images because we don't see uh, wash out of the whole lesion. Some parts of the lesion still show uh, strong enhancement. The lesion is not seen in its entire entirety to be surrounded by capsule. It is only seen along one side. In all cases, this is either Lyrats 4 or Lyrats 5, so the rule will push it to Lyrats 4. On the diffusion weighted images, the lesion is showing diffusion restriction. And here we have the calculated diffusion restriction image superimposed on the initial B value zero diffusion weighted image. Imaging follow-up has also been performed for the scrotum and the ultrasonography here of the scrotum shows the varicocele of the left side to be larger than before. And ultrasonography of the testicles shows now clearly that we are having focal testicular lesions consistent with sarcoidosis, not only because we are having now definite evidence of the systemic involvement by sarcoidosis, but also because the lesions here are showing a typical feature of sarcoidosis, which is that the lesions are not spherical in configuration, but they become multifaceted, particularly when they come close to each other. Now we are going back to have a second look at the initial ultrasound done in 2017. And we see that the testicles are quite grainy. Again, the same argument we have introduced about the liver. 
is this a technical factor of the ultrasound image or the sarcoidosis was there since then and it is uh, actually the cause of the infertility given that the semen analysis picture is not that of the unilateral varicocele and given also that the disease has declared itself clearly on the subsequent ultrasonography. Ultrasound guided biopsy has been performed and revealed moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma. Surgical resection of the segment 4, segment 5, and the gallbladder has been performed and it revealed the presence of moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma, which was excised entirely. During the operation, there has been also multiple nodules uh, on the surface of the liver, some of them excised and proved histologically to be sarcoid nodules. The background liver was fatty and there was no mention about cirrhosis. And what is most important of all the histopathological data is the presence of sarcoid nodules within the hepatocellular carcinoma itself. And this is a feature that tells us that this is a sarcoidosis related hepatocellular carcinoma and this may be the reason here on imaging that the lesion is not entirely washing out as we expect the hepatocellular carcinoma to be but the persistently enhancing spots within the lesion may be the sarcoid nodules. So the diagnosis here is sarcoidosis associated hepatocellular carcinoma. And the learning points are sarcoidosis may be associated with hepatitis B virus infection. In fact, some authorities think of hepatitis B in these cases as a trigger factor for initiating the whole process of sarcoidosis being an immune related disorder. Sarcoidosis may be associated with hepatocellular carcinoma, even in the absence of other risk factors. Sarcoidosis may present by infertility due to testicular involvement, as we have seen in the present case may present by arrhythmias, and this is due to involvement of the myocardium by sarcoid nodules. This is not documented in the present case because no MRI of the heart has been performed, and this appearance is difficult to diagnose on CT. May be presenting by chest pain, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Sarcoid lesions are non-spherical and tend to have a multifaceted configuration when they come close to each other or when they meet a rigid structure in the vicinity. This is also seen in the spinal lymph nodes. We see here the triangular configuration of this lymph node neighbored on one side by the uh, descending thoracic aorta and on one side by the left atrium. Systemic sarcoidosis may regress at one side and progress at the other. 